What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda. In the last episode we finished the level 3 temple, and in this episode, well guess what? We're gonna explore some more of Hyrule, get some upgrades, and then take on the level 4 temple. Hope you guys are excited. Anyways, the first thing that I want to do is get something called the Blue Ring. Now we can purchase this from a shop that's nearby, but it does cost like 250 rupees, which is really expensive considering we found out in the last episode that we can only hold up to 255 rupees, so yeah, it's gonna cost us like almost everything we can carry just to buy it. But I do think it will be worth it since uh, basically this item will increase our defense a ton. Which, believe it or not, is going to help out a lot in the next temple. Like, you guys might think this game is easy from the way that I've been playing it, but truth be told, we've sort of been overpowered for everything up to this point. Like, think about it. The very first thing I did in this game was get two more hearts and then upgrade my sword. And of course, afterwards, I always made sure to, like, go and get other upgrades and hearts before each temple, so... Technically, I've been, like, ahead of the game, which has made things a little bit easier. Now the game is going to start catching up to us though, so things won't be as face roll as they have been. So I may need to actually start trying a little bit in this next temple, and um, I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if I die at some point in the future because, like I said, this game can be very unforgiving. Now we do have a little bit of a problem though, because like I said, we need 250 rupees, and right now we only have 240, so hopefully we'll get lucky along the way, and uh, some of these enemies will drop enough rupees for us. But the shop we need to go to is like four screens away, so it may not happen. If we don't get enough, I'll probably just like cut and then come back after I go and like grind up the rupees we need, so it's not really that big of a deal. But it would be nice not to have to do that. And the game has been pretty nice to us so far in giving us, you know, what we need, when exactly we need it, so hopefully that trend will continue, but um, yeah, it's not looking too good. Gosh dang it. Alright, we got one more screen because this is where the shop is located, so hopefully one of these guys will give us like five rupees, that would be great, but um, I don't know man, there's a really low chance of that. Oh, there we go, oh, that's one rupee. Gosh dang it. Alright, I'm gonna go find some rupees and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got exactly 250 rupees. Let's activate this guy. That way we can get access to the shop, go inside, and now we can buy the lovely blue ring for all of our rupees. Well, there goes all my hard-earned cash. Thankfully, there are a ton of secrets still in Hyrule that we have yet to plunder, so we can always get more rupees later on should we need them. And yes, there are more things that we will need to buy from the shop later on. Alright, so, before we make our way to the level 4 temple, which by the way is directly above us, like, uh, that dock on the right side of the screen, well, above, like, where we are right now, uh, will take us over to the level 4 temple, like, you'll stand on the dock, press forward, and then you can ride the raft that you got in the level 3 temple, all the way over to level 4, but, before we do that, there is another heart container that I would like to pick up, like I said in the last episode, there's only two heart containers left in the overworld, and uh, they're actually fairly close to each other. Problem is, we can't get the last one until we get the item from the level 4 temple, but I really don't want to go into the level 4 temple without, like, this extra heart, because things are going to get a little bit trickier, so... Yeah, I don't really mind taking the long trip twice, because even though it is kind of far away, it is worth going this way just for the extra heart, trust me. Anyways, while we make our way over to this heart, I gotta say, the support on this LP so far has blown my expectations out of the water. Like, I did not think you guys would have been interested at all in seeing Zelda 1 just because it's such an old game. And that's kind of why, like, I haven't done a lot of retro LPs on this channel. But I needed something short to, like, fill the gap between, you know, Triforce Heroes and the next, like, huge project. So I picked this game. But I kind of thought it was going to like tank on my channel and not do well at all. So I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the continued support because really this LP has done pretty much as well as some of my larger projects. Oh, by the way, yeah, there is the other heart container that we can't get right now. No, we cannot use the raft to get that even though it looks very, very close by. We actually need to use the item that we get from the next temple. So we will be coming back this way. 
probably after we finish up the next temple instead. Let's launch off this dock, and now we can head over to this weird looking cave, but inside it's not a temple, it's actually an old man, and we can get ourselves another heart container, so there we go. All this way just for that, and now, we gotta make our way back to the level 4 temple. Now I did point out where it was before, so I'm just gonna cut there, and I'll see you guys when I arrive. Alright, so we are just about there. All we gotta do is sneak past this Oct Rock and uh, launch off this dock and boom, baby! Now we are at the entrance of the level 4 temple. Pretty simple. Now, like I said, the level 4 temple is uh, pretty difficult. And it's a lot longer than the other three temples that we've been in thus far. But guess what? Well, after we kill all these enemies... Something is going to appear in the center of the room, and it's a key. And you'll notice that we have three small keys now. And you're probably wondering, how could we have three keys if we just started the temple? Well, guess what? Keys carry over from the previous temples. So since in level three, I didn't unlock all the doors because they led to useless rooms, we get a tiny bit of an advantage in this temple since now I don't need to collect as many keys and we can skip fighting some enemies which is really nice. I'll be honest though, I actually didn't sort of like plan for this to happen but I mean, I might as well take advantage of the situation because the enemies in this temple are kind of annoying. Yeah, those blue like bouncing bunny things, they turn into red bats after you hit them once. They're not fun to fight, so if I can avoid fighting some of those guys, I will, since it's very, very time-consuming to fight them. Plus, they do kind of a lot of damage. Now, obviously, this temple does have the gimmick of, like, rooms that you go into and are dark, so if that happens, just pull out your blue candle, use it, and that will light the room right up for you, no problemo. Now, I would recommend trying to keep your sword laser as long as you possibly can in this temple, because... That will help you so much in fighting uh, these weird blue enemies since obviously they can fly all around. Hitting them from far away gives you the advantage. And you're probably thinking, wait, didn't you get the bow in like the very first temple? How come you're not using that? Well, uh, here's the thing. We got the bow. We don't have any arrows for it. <laughs> yeah, arrows are a separate item in this game. It's really bizarre, I know, but um... We need to go and buy the arrow item from one of the shops, and I believe it costs like 80 rupees, but after that, um, we can have like unlimited arrows, except that every time we fire our bow, it costs us one rupee, so yeah, it's really, really weird, like our bow is tied to our amount of rupees, and we can't even use it until we buy an arrow, and I just haven't done it yet because it's really not that useful, so yeah, but um... I mean, if you have the extra money, definitely go to one of the shops and buy the arrow. That way you can take advantage of that because it is useful in some certain instances. I'm just saying that because it's tied to the amount of rupees that you have, and because rupees are kind of important in this game, I really don't use the bow all that much unless I absolutely have to use it. Anyways, these guys might look familiar because they're like-like, so yeah, try not and get near them, especially if you have the magic shield because they will eat it. Thankfully, the like-likes in this game are kind of easy to kill, so yeah, they're not really too much of a threat. Anyways, though, let's head down this secret staircase because, well, guess what? We're gonna get the item from this temple, which is the ladder. Yeah, this game has some really, really weird items, but trust me, the ladder is super, super useful. It actually allows you to cross, like, uh, one by one gaps, so pretty much anything that was, like, blue in this temple that was only one square wide, we can now just, like, walk right over it with our ladder, so it allows us to go to a whole bunch of new areas. Pretty cool, and this is exactly what we need to use in order to get that last heart container that we saw earlier in this video. So at some point, we will have to make our way back to that part of the map, which is fine because the level 8 temple is actually in that general area anyways, but uh, knowing me, I'll probably just go and grab that at like the start of the next episode because it's literally just a free heart waiting for us to pick it up at this point, so why would I not go and grab it? Plus, that is the last heart in the overworld, uh, the rest of them we will end up getting in temples like this one, so I mean, 
that's pretty cool as well. But, um, yeah, there is a lot of stuff that I actually want to take care of in the next episode, so we'll have to get that done. Oh, and here's another new thing about this temple. Yeah, it's the start of mini-bosses, so this is Manhandler. We need to fight him again. And, oh, that was not optimal. And All right, well, this is just not good at all, then. Gosh dang it, Manhandler, come on. Play along with me. Well, that kind of stinks, actually. I did not want to use that many bombs. Anyways, though, place one here, and guess what? There is a hidden area not marked on your map. And over here is just a bunch of rupees, nothing too special. You don't really need to go here if you don't want to. Just figured I would show it off since, like I said, it's not marked on your map. But, uh, speaking of things we can do in the next episode, walk into the waterfall. Yeah, so there's another little, like, cryptic secret. This one is not related to the boss. Instead, it's related to something you can do in the overworld. And the waterfall that he's talking about is very close to the entrance to the fifth temple. So we'll probably check that out in the next episode as well. And, of course, you can't actually do that unless you have the ladder, what you get from this temple. So it all sort of makes sense. Anyways, let's grab this key, get rid of the bat, and now we can move on. I probably didn't even need to bother with that because I did already have an extra key anyways. And oh, that was real nice game. Yeah, I totally forgot about these. If you're not quick enough, you will get hurt by these blade traps when entering this room. Not cool, man. Not cool at all. Actually, did I even need that key for anything? Um, maybe... Yeah, no, I don't think I do. That's really weird. I wonder why there's a key, like, just randomly at the end of this temple when you don't even need it. Unless there's, like, a locked door somewhere earlier in the temple that, uh, you would need that key for. Eh, whatever, I'll take it, man. Having two extra keys, like, for the next temple, that's pretty cool. I think you can actually go and buy keys from the shops in this game, too, so if you really wanted some extra keys, you can just go and buy them. But, uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that since it's really... <laughs> Not all that useful, like having the two extra keys is nice, but it's not at all necessary. Anyways, here's the boss for this temple, it's this weird two-headed dragon thing. Um, the only thing you gotta worry about with this dragon is the magic orbs that he shoots, because I really don't think there's a pattern to the rate that he shoots them, so... I think what happens is, if they hit you and they sort of disappear, he can just fire another one instantly. I need to be a little bit careful here because I'm kind of low on HP. I did not mean for that to happen, so... Whoops! Alright, let's, uh... Let's try and strategize and... Oh, really? He was one hit away? Are you kidding me? Well, never mind then. Let's just grab this next shot of the Triforce, and that's going to do it for level 4. I can't believe he was only, like, one hit away, so... Yeah, you can probably just, like, tank all the damage from that boss if you are, like, close to full HP. Anyways, though, I think that's a good place to end off this video. So if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.